good, y'all. So, I'm going to be acting to, I'm looking at my TV so I get the title right. Horrifying things that happen on horror movie sets. Um, I look like this because I'm about to leave and go do some grocery shopping and so all that cute shit out the way. But it's October 1st. I'm going to upload this tomorrow though. So it'll be October 2nd. But who, you feel me? It's, it's, it's spooky season, a spooky month, okay? My birthday's in less than two weeks. I love scary shit. That's like cap, low key. Like I like it in a sense that it's very intriguing to me. It keeps me engaged. It keeps me... You know, I like the, the unknown really will have me like talk. I could talk about shit like that and want to research and learn more and all that stuff. And, you know, it's just, you know, very interesting. And then on top of that, Halloween is dope. Just the fall aesthetic and vibe and my birthday. Like, it's just every like, like, like everything about it, the scary shit. But then, OK, well, let's go get some fucking fall food shit. And then, oh, my God, let's put on you put on a hoodie now. Maybe one day you could put on a short sleeve shirt and it feel warm on you good. Everything's cool. Then we could go get some food like a uh, Thanksgiving shit. You feel me? So I just it's a, this is a dope ass season for real for us. So anyways, let's get into this video. Legitimately scary. But in some cases, the events that took place on the sets of certain horror movies were more terrifying than the movies themselves. A number of horrifying that. incidents have taken place on the sets of some of the most successful horror movies of all time, before, during, or shortly the after ring? filming. Whether these incidents were fatal accidents, cruel twists of fate, or some sort of evil curse, still remains debatable. Perhaps a good place to start would be the Amityville Horror House, whose events may start to seem even scarier when you learn Oh, and by the way, because mofos lose their fucking mind about oh my god you didn't give this this guy credit you didn't give this guy credit can't believe i clicked on this video you're stealing his video this is a reaction channel i literally put the person whose video it is in the title and i link their freaking video in the description so you can go to that video if you want to so if y'all come under this video doing all that nonsense you're getting blocked i don't care take it up with your manager or something. I don't care, but y'all are annoying sometimes. For real. Like, y'all are annoying. I know what to do. Trust me, I've dealt with copyright before. So I know how to give somebody credit. I'm not trying to steal nobody's video. I'm reacting to the video. If anything, that's bringing attention to the video. Correct? Bitch. The fuck? So, yes, it's Mr. Nightmare's video. It'll all be... Ev whatever. And that horrors also took place on the sets for both the 1979 movie and the 2005 remake. The yeah, first Amityville movie starred James Brolin, who wasn't originally eager to take on the role, but eventually he... And I'll say I've never seen these because I usually watch horror movies with people, and the people I try to watch it with have already seen this shit, so they don't want to watch it. ...accepted it because of something strange that happened. While reading the script one morning and getting to a scary section of the story, a pair of the actor's pants suddenly fell off a hanger, causing him to literally jump out of his chair in fright. James, of course, saw this as a sign that he needed to take the role, and the rest was history. Fast forward to the 2005 remake with Ryan Reynolds taking on the part that was originally played by James Brolin. During filming, Ryan Reynolds along with other cast members claimed that every morning at exactly 3.15 a.m. they would wake up. The reason why that's terrifying is because 3.15 a.m. was the exact time that Ronald DeFeo murdered his entire family in the house. Mm. And it becomes a whole lot more creepy. At one point during filming, there was also an actual dead body that washed up near the filming set in the boathouse in the backyard of the house. Actors and crew members always suspected that there was an otherworldly presence during the filming of the movie. Whether they were right or just overly paranoid, who knows. The 2012 film The Possession is an unconventional horror movie that involves rabbis, this. Judaism, and a cursed Jewish relic called Dybbuk Box that yes. attaches itself to a young girl. A Dybbuk box is a wine cabinet claimed to be haunted by a Dybbuk, which is a malevolent wandering spirit that enters and possesses the body of a living person until exorcised. What happened on the set of The Possession left even the star of the movie Jeffrey Dean Morgan feeling very uneasy, and he already had a lot of experience acting in horror movies and shows under his belt. Oh, Some Negan. of the seemingly supernatural things that happened included lights exploding for no apparent reason, as well as chilly breezes wafting through closed sets for no particular reason. But the scariest incident occurred when the storage facility where all the movie props were being held caught fire and burned to the ground. A team of investigators concluded that the fire was not started from an electrical fault or arson, 
but the actual cause for the fire couldn't be determined. The Dybbuk box used in the movie, which played an important was role real, in the movie, was destroyed in the fire, and the cast and crew later oh. refused to allow the movie's producers to replace the Dybbuk box for fear that it was cursed. By supernatural Conjuring. entities in the Rhode Island home in the movie. 70s. Oh God. While several of the and this is based off of a lot of truth stuff, so which is probably about to say, but um, which makes it all, all the more interesting. The family oh. members spent time on the set during filming. The mother refused to go anywhere near it, as she was convinced that several unexplained events that plagued the filming of this movie on set were proof that the spirits hadn't finished with them yet. For instance, when members of the parent family were visiting, a furious gust of wind suddenly rose and seemed to swirl around them. However, nobody could see any movement in any of the trees just opposite them, movement you'd expect to see from any normal gust of wind. Just a couple days later, the hotel that the actors and movie crew were staying in caught fire and everyone had to be evacuated. And it doesn't end there. James Wan, the movie's director, recalls working late in his office one evening when his dog started growling at something. He would get up to investigate, but he couldn't find anything that would be antagonizing the dog. That happened with me. However, the dog had his sights on something across the room. It seemed he had focused on an unseen entity in one corner of the room. James took a break from working after this, having been legitimately freaked out. Vera Farmiga, who played the role of a paranormal investigator in the film, refused to take the script home with her, as she said it made her feel uneasy. She also couldn't read it at night because she became paralyzed by fear whenever she tried. After a phone call discussion with James Wan, Vera opened her laptop screen and there were three digital claw marks from the upper right diagonal to the lower left. That's insane. This wasn't the last time it happened though. Her next experience came a few months later, literally on the day that she completed work on The Conjuring. She returned home to upstate New York and when she woke up the next day, she discovered what she describes as three claw mark bruises across her thigh. In 1983, a movie based on the Twilight Ooh, Zone series was released. Used to love this. During I filming, used to watch it. actor Vic Morrow was killed on the set. Deaths on movie sets have happened many times, but what makes this extra disturbing is the fact that Morrow appeared to predict his demise just a year earlier. A year before filming of the Twilight Zone movie began, Vic took out a $5 million life insurance policy on himself, explaining Damn. to friends and family members that he had a premonition something bad was going to happen to him on an upcoming movie. He had seen it in a dream he had. Unfortunately, his premonition came true, because while filming a scene involving a helicopter for the Twilight Zone, the helicopter crashed and decapitated him. Two mm. child actors were also killed in the accident, mm. which prompted a lengthy investigation and court case. It was later revealed in court that the movie's concept artist unintentionally drew an identical image in his sketches to what actually happened, a burned out helicopter in the middle of a river essentially foreshadowing the accident. The accident led to civil and criminal action against the filmmakers, which lasted nearly a decade. One of the children's fathers testified that he heard John Landis, the director, instructing the helicopter to fly lower. All four parents testified that they were never told that there would be helicopters or explosives on set, and they had been assured that there would be no danger, only a lot of noise. John Landis and four other crew members would be found not guilty on the three charges of manslaughter, having been the first time a director was charged due to a fatality on a film set. After their biological child died shortly oh after Jesus. birth. The 1976 film The Omen uh, is another I've horror classic seen. following the tale of a young boy named Damien Thorne. Sometimes it's hard for me to watch like the, the classics because the usually the effects are so bad. Um, the story is usually like great, but the effects are so bad, and sometimes I can't get like you know sucked in, pulled into it. And so, yeah, it's it's like hard to keep my attention. It was replaced at like I watched the um, Poltergeist, the old one, and was laughing at it with my friend, and it was just like it just was so like I don't know. It's hard for me. Notes to his wife after their biological child died shortly after birth. As a series of mysterious events and violent deaths occur around the family and Damien enters childhood, they come to learn he's in fact the Antichrist. The film almost wasn't going to be completed due to an alleged curse that surrounded filming of the movie. So many horrible things happened on the set of The Omen that it can be comparable to the amount of bad things to happen in the movie. The tragedies began with the son of the lead actor Gregory Peck taking his own life as soon as filming began. The next incident was when a crew member suffered major injuries after getting into a car accident while driving to the set. But the tragedies didn't stop there. 
the scriptwriter's airplane was struck by lightning en route to the film's location. And if that weren't enough, an airplane in which Gregory Peck and the movie's executive producer were traveling in was also struck by lightning in a separate incident. Harvey Bernhardt, the producer, was on location in Rome when he was almost hit by a bolt of lightning himself. And believe it or not, the horrible luck involving airplanes continued. And it got much worse. One day, the crew had decided to use a private airplane to get from one film location to the other. However, just after the plane took off with a number of the crew on board, something went wrong and the plane went down, crashing into a road and hitting a car, which then crashed at a high speed into another vehicle. All 11 people involved in the accident were killed. Another tragic death associated with the movie set was that of Liz Moore. John Richardson, the Omen special effects expert, was driving through the Netherlands with Liz Moore when they were involved in a terrible car accident. Richardson escaped with very minor injuries, but Moore's head was completely severed when a tire smashed into their vehicle. This incident was eerily reminiscent of a scene in The Omen, in which the character Keith Jennings, investigating Damien's supernatural origins, is decapitated by a sheet of glass that comes loose from a vehicle on a construction site. Richardson later reported that just before the crash, he passed a road sign that read Omen 66.6 kilometers. Make of that what you will, but there's no denying that it's not too far off to speculate that the production of the Omen may have been cursed. That or it was all just an outrageous coincidence. All that can be said for sure is that the Omen is a very iconic movie, and the chilling tales that surround its production have only helped to cement that legacy. All right, so, I mean, these are really freaky, you know what I'm saying? I really, I believe things, like, I believe when you're portraying, especially true stories and stuff like that, that you're going to probably run into these types of things, and I know people want to be authentic, and sometimes they use the original objects that were in this and that and the third and blah, 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 and I just don't think that's a good idea. As somebody who, I've had my own experiences in the last house that I was in with some really weird shit. I don't think you should play with that. You know what I'm saying? And I think even, like I said, it don't even matter if you use real stuff. I think that it's going to make it worse. But I'm saying I think just the, like, recreation of certain events, stuff like that, just will, like, attract negative energy. And I don't know if as a, you know, they're probably in contract, so I don't think you could just be like, fuck you, I quit. <laughs> but um, I don't know. It's not enough money or I don't think any money in the world could, like, be enough to go through stuff like that. Um... You know, it's just, it's just, it's a lot. But the the movies are great. The movies are, you feel me? Like, they, they're great. So, they come out amazing. But just to think of some of the stuff that has to go on uh, behind the scenes is kind of insane. And, like, I heard that even in the Pulcher guys, like, like the, the, the characters were just dying, like, in real life. And I was just like, damn, like, okay. You know, like, it's just sometimes, is it even worth it? And then if, let's say nothing of, like, some supernatural shit happens, the I've heard multiple times that people that play in horror movies has to be in, like, extensive therapy for, like, a year, at least, because of all that they've gone through and all of the, like, they, they get sucked into it and all this, like, and it's just, like, you know, constant paranoia. Even, like, the person who plays the bad guy or the bad thing or the evil thing it's like they'll still have to be like you know it's just a lot but like i said it's spooky season so we're gonna get into this this month i'm gonna do a like mm, i'll say i don't know i don't like i'll be like i'm gonna do one every day that i react i'm gonna have a scary thing up there but i'm gonna, I'm gonna try to do at least, at least two a week that's eight videos that's 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 doable for sure so anyways this was enjoyable though and I, I i like mr nightmares videos to everybody who's had a little fit on the last post that i had with him in it anyways y'all like comment subscribe follow me on instagram follow me on tiktok i'll see y'all in the next one <music>